dear colleague, we will speak of this uh, very tough situation because the pain is, you know, is, is really something that is terrible and can alter our results of the surgery and making our patient unsatisfied. So we know that we can have uh, a bad problem with chronic post-surgical pain. And this is estimated to be in between 10 and 70% of our patient treated, especially for orthopedics, it is around 30%. So one third of our patient is complaining of some pain after the surgery. Maybe they are not satisfied. This is the literature, maybe is overestimating the problem, but I think that at least 20% of our patients, they complain for pain somehow. And then the risk factors, they are not independent of each other, but they are interlinked. And just to show these uh, risk factors, we need this slide, because of course we can have a genetic predispos predisposition, so the patient genetically is predisposed to have more pain than the other. Or we can have problem with our surgery. The severity of postoperative pain, that's very important. This is making an, a really an important point because probably all the pain receptors that we, are, that we have, they are overexcited. And so this is important to control this. Then the surgical risk factors, that means maybe the operation was not perfect. We had some complication. The, the operation was uh, very long or we, had, we create some damage to, to nerves. Even small nerves, they, they, can, they can count on that. And then the reoperations, they create another problem, another trauma, bleeding, infection. And then preoperative, we have some characteristic like female gender, younger age, a huge and important pain before surgery, and a prolonged use of uh, analgesic or opioids. And then from the environmental point of view, a poor education, low income, a poor self-rated health. And psychologically, we saw even this morning how, how important is this psychological effect. So the attitudes, the anxiety, a lot of patients are really anxious. And so this can create problems. And then the expectation of a chronic pain as well. That's why it has been developed a multimodal approach when we are dealing with pain and surgery. So the knee analgesia is coming from epidural analgesia, spinal, peripheral nerve blocks, and then the use intravenous of non-steroidal drugs and opioids as well. As well. But we, we know that opioids, they can have a, a side effect that are terrible. So we try not to take advantage too much of opioids, at least in Europe. So the aim for total knee postoperative pain management is that we need, of course, to have all of these weapons that we have to have a good postoperative pain control, motor sparing, opioid sparing. We need an early mobilization of the patient. We need not to have nausea and vomit after the operation because these really make the, the life of the patient terrible, you know? And then not postoperative delirium, even if this is pretty a rare condition, but this can happen as well. And the patients are afraid to have a delirium. And so at least in Europe, they want to skip general anesthesia because they are afraid to lose their mind. They are afraid to lose uh, their capacity to be clear. So the preemptive analgesia, what is? Is an analgesia that is uh, initiated before the surgical procedure in order to reduce the sensitization. So it means to reduce the hyperexcitation of the pain receptors. And this is protective uh, about the nociceptive system. And we need to take advantage of some drugs. The most important are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, but then opioids as well. And some people, they use systemic antiepileptics or uh, some kind of uh, anesthetics. But that's important that you start this kind of control of the pain before the surgery. 
And especially the non-steroidal drugs, they are very useful. And we suggest to use the selective COX-2 inhibitors because they can prevent the secondary prostaglandin hyperalgesia. So it means that the prostaglandin and bradykinin release, they are the main cause of inflammatory pain. And that's important to control this release very well before the surgery. Opioids, of course, they are mostly used for pain control and they work interacting with their receptors. You can use it before the surgery with several kinds of ways. And then they can uh, provide a delay in the request of analgesics after the surgery. So some people, they do a premedication with opioids. This is not the standard of my hospital, but this is admitted. Then we have to know the knee anatomy and innervation because, of course, this anatomy is very useful when we deal with nerve blocks. We have a huge innervation of the anterior and the posterior part of the knee, and this must be stu studied and understand. We have several techniques to deal with these nerves. The most important is the motor sparing approach with an adapter canal block. So you go by ultrasound, you inject the anesthetics, and you block this canal and the nerve in it. Then the second possibility that you may, you may have is the IPAC block. So it's an infiltration between the popliteal artery and the capsule of the knee. Always by ultrasound. And the third one is something that is most common and maybe most of you are using that, is the LIA. It's a local infiltration analgesia that you do after, uh, before closing uh, the capsule and after implanting uh, your prosthesis and you inject ropivacaine, ketorolac, adrenaline into the tissues around the surgical field in order to achieve uh, a pain control uh, uh, with uh, little uh, physiological disturbance. So what about associating some of these techniques? What's the difference? So the motor sparing with the uh, Abdur canal block and IPAC, and this has been shown to reduce the length of stay, to increase the discharge at home, and to reduce the use of uh, uh, pain uh, drugs. And even the opioids can be reduced if you use this kind of association. So, ACB and IPAC block. Sorry. And what about to use ACB and LIA? Of course, if we compare ACB alone and ACB plus LIA, we have a better analgesia and faster functional rehabilitation in our patients. But LIA is less precise if compared to IPAC, because you saw with IPAC, we go with ultrasound, and we can do a really a, a very precise block. In case of LIA procedure, we need to use more anesthetic than using an IPAC technique. So the use of multimodal anesthesia with regional techniques may decrease perioperative opioid use for patient, and then we need to push in that direction. In conclusion, the chronic post-surgical pain is in, of impact in orthopedic surgery. We think that in between 20 and 30% of our patients are experiencing that chronic pain. The multimodal approach is the state of the art. The preemptive analgesia should be done with COX-2 inhibitors. And then acetaminophen, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, tramadol and oxycontin are the common administered analgesics for pain after total knee. A motor sparing approach with ACB, IPAC, and LIA provide better analgesia and faster functional rehabilitation. We have no clear evidence that LIA could be compared with IPAC. So for instance, in our hospital, the anesthesiologists prefer to do ACB and IPAC together, and they say you can skip to perform the LIA, you can save the time in your surgery, and maybe some complication. And the multimodal approach should be in a multidisciplinary team, so you need 
to speak with your anesthesiologist, to have meetings, and you know, to manage difficult people like anesthesiologists. <laughs> I take the advantage to invite all of you to the, uh, the Italian knee meeting will be in Milano in April 2023. If you cannot come in 2023, then you can come for the ESCA European meeting that will be in Milano in May 2024. I thank you very much for your attention.